thank you very much for that introduction. It's an honor to be here and a great pleasure to, to come to Germany and to come to Europe again. So, um, I don't know how many, are there any professional philosophers here? <laughs> oh, wow, okay, so I'm on. <laughs> so, in the philosophy of the 20th century, why science works has been one of the key pressing and so far unsolved questions. And a little bit, so here's a one minute version of the history of philosophy of science in the 20th century. There were, about a century ago into the 1920s, the logical positivists, centered mostly in Vienna and some offshoots in London, um, in which they thought to reduce science to a logical structure in which the meaning of any sentence, the meaning of indeed terms in sentences, were the instructions to verify it. A Viennese, Viennese philosopher who then moved, we're now in the post-war period, to London, Karl Popper, opposed this by arguing that positive affirmation statements can't be verified in science, but they can be falsified. So it's possible to give conditions under which a prediction of a scientific theory can be contradicted, and that therefore shows that the theory is false. Thomas Kuhn, among others, attacked that and argued that it never really is so simple, it never really happens that way, and he put forward a theory or a description of scientific revolutions that, however, even in his own later work, falls apart when it's looked at more closely. And finally, Paul Feyerabend, another Viennese, who, who then studied in London and then taught in the United States and Europe, um, argue that there is no scientific method. Scientists are merely opportunists who use whatever they can get away with. And that includes lying and cheating and stealing and so forth. So that's the, where the professionals brought it. So mulling over it, um, what's, what's the point? How does science, because nonetheless, and Feyerabend did not set out to demolish science, he just wanted to point out we have no idea how it works. He didn't attack the idea that it does work. And I think science does work, but how? if there is no method to science, no single method. So my insight is that what happens in science is we always reason from incomplete but shared evidence to limited but expanding consensus. We do manage arguing from shared evidence to reach some conclusions. How do we do this? And more particularly, we're very smart human beings, but we're wired to think fast. We're wired to be, you know, in, the, in nature somewhere, the tiger is coming or the snake is coming. We're wired to think fast and jump to conclusions fast. So we often make mistakes and we often fool ourselves. So how do we keep from being fools all the time? How do we keep from fooling ourselves and being fooled by other people? And my proposal, which is not unique to me, but it's the idea that I wanted to explore, is that science works because scientists are members of communities and these communities are tied together by systems of ethics. So that's the key idea, that the communities govern by and defined by systems of ethics. And here's some evidence for that. What do we do, what do we think is good for scientists to do? We have to be honest, we have to argue in good faith, we have to work from shared public evidence, because it's so easy to fool ourselves, we develop crafts, crafts of experiment, checking our experiments, checking our calculations over and over again to detect error. And indeed, the training of a scientist is primarily a training in the detection and elimination of errors. It's not about ideas. Lots of people have ideas, and every once in a while there's a good idea. It's about showing that your ideas and other people's ideas are bad ideas by finding errors. Okay. And a scientist is somebody who has a degree that basically consists of having demonstrated that they have control over, mastery over a craft for detecting errors. So that's my picture of the scientific community.